Hi 21st Century Families and anybody else who might be tuning in. My name is Farmer Luke and I'm the Food Corps AmeriCorps service member here at Farm Health School and at McDonough School here in Middletown. I'm going to show you how to make your very own cranberry sauce using just a few very accessible ingredients. And I'll post the recipe along with a few notes below so that you can look back at them later. Enjoy! One thing I think is always important to remember is that no matter how much people have changed the foods that we eat, they all originally came from plants and the environment of the planet that we live on. That's why I wanted to read just a quick story to remind us of that. Here's Plants Feed Me by Lizzie Rockwell. I am a plant eater. Plants reach up for the sun. They grow down in the ground. I eat different parts from different plants. Sometimes I eat the leaves, chard, lettuce, spinach, and cabbage are all plants that you eat the leaves of. And sometimes I eat the roots and tubers. Look at all these roots. You have parsnips, radishes, potatoes, beets, and carrots. Roots get water and food from the earth for the plants. I also eat the bulbs. I eat the stems and the flowers too. You have onions, you eat the bulbs from onions. Asparagus, you eat the stem and flowers. And broccoli. Broccoli is the flower of a plant. I eat fruits. Some grow on trees, like apples. First flowers bloom, then come the fruits. Apples start off as a flower. Fruits have seeds. A seed can grow into a new plant. So you grow new apple trees. Blueberries are fruits. They grow on a bush. Not all fruits grow on trees. And melons are fruits. They grow on a vine. Yet again, a different type of fruit. Fruits hang from the tomato plant. Tomatoes are fruits. Pumpkins, peppers, and eggplants are fruits too. In some plants, the seed is the best part to eat. Peas are seeds. They grow inside pods. One of many types of seeds. Beans do too. You have string beans, cranberry beans, very different from cranberries, which we'll be using in our sauce, and different types of dried beans. Look at all the variety. I eat seeds from rice plants. Rice is a seed. I eat seeds from wheat plants. Wheat is a seed. Wheat seeds make flour. Flour is used to make bread and lots more. Walnuts are seeds. They fall from trees. Fruit, the fruit opens. And the walnut is inside the fruit. And then inside of the shell is the walnut that you eat. I eat seeds and I eat leaves. I eat flowers, bulbs, and stems. I eat roots and fruits. Plants feed me. Plants feed the world. They feed all the animals that we eat, like chickens and cows. They feed the sheep that give us wool to make our clothing. They also feed the cows that give us milk, which we drink. Plants are the source of all our food. And the environment they grow in is the source of those plants. It's important for us to know. So, Let's talk about the ingredients that we have for our cranberry sauce and where they came from. First, we'll be using a cup of dried cranberries.
Cranberries grow naturally on bushes and trees all across the northern part of the world, from the U northern US and Canada to Europe and Russia. Cranberries have some good nutrients for you. Vitamin C is an antioxidant that helps you stay healthy. And it is good for your skin, muscles, and bones. Manganese and vitamin E are other antioxidants that are good for growing and keeping you going. Vitamin K and copper are good for your blood and heart. Whole cranberries are also a good source of fiber, which helps your digestion, among other things. The ones we're using have been dried, like how grapes are dried to make raisins, and then they've been sweetened to make them easier to eat on their own, because fresh cranberries are quite sour. Next, we have a tablespoon of lemon juice. Lemons are grown in warmer areas, like California and Florida here in the U.S., but they can be grown here in Connecticut if they have the right care. The powder we have is the acids and flavors of real lemon with all the water processed out of it. You can mix two of these packets with a tablespoon of water to make your lemon juice, or you can just add the packets right into the sauce as you're making the recipe. Third, we have a tablespoon and a half of sugar. Even sugar comes from plants. Sugar comes from the plant sugar cane, which grows really well in tropical climates like the Caribbean. However, sugar, especially the white sugar that we'll be using, has been very processed by machines and is generally not good for us in large amounts. A few packets should be enough for this recipe. Lastly, we'll be using about a cup and a half of water. Water is found everywhere and is essential for life on Earth. Not all water you just find around outside is safe for cooking and drinking though. So you wanna make sure that the water you're using, whether from the tap or bottle, is safe for consumption. Now, let's get started on our recipe. Let's get to making our cranberry sauce recipe. If you're watching this as a family member of Farm Hill's 21st Century After School Program, you should have received a bag with all the ingredients that you'll need for this recipe, along with a sheet that has the ingredients, as well as the steps for making the recipe. If not, I've posted the recipe steps and ingredients down below this video, so you can just follow along there. First. With adult supervision, you want to make sure you have a small saucepan on over high heat. You'll then be adding all of your ingredients at once. You have a cup and a half of water. We have a cup of dried cranberries. We have some of our dried lemon mixed in with a tablespoon of water or a tablespoon of lemon juice. And we have about a tablespoon and a half of sugar. You don't need quite as much because some of the dried cranberries already have some sugar in them. Once that is all in your saucepan, You'll see the cranberries start to dissolve a little bit as the water turns red. That's good. That's exactly what you want to happen. Then you'll bring this up to a boil, as fast as your oven can do. And as it comes to a boil, you'll cover it and leave it on high heat for three minutes so that your cranberries can soften and start to dissolve. You can now see the bubbles coming to the top of our cranberry sauce, which means that it's boiling. Once it's boiling, you want to cover the sauce and let it stay that way for three minutes. As you get towards three minutes, use some hand protection because the lid will be hot. You can take the lid off and check and see how your cranberries are doing. Look at that. They're absorbing a lot of the water and starting to dissolve. Now 
about three minutes, you're gonna wanna remove your cranberries from the heat so they can cool just a little bit. And if you have a hand blender, or as some people call an immersion blender, which is a blender that you can stick into your sauce and it will blend up all the thicker pieces, you can use that. I'll show you how to use a regular blender in case you don't have an immersion blender. Once your cranberries have cooled just a little bit, so they're safe to go into the blender, you wanna take them and pour them carefully out of your saucepan into your blender. If some get stuck, you don't wanna use your hands because remember that it was just hot. Grab a spoon or a rubber spatula or something to scoop out any cranberries that get stuck and you wanna make sure you get blended. Next, with your hot cranberries, put them on your blender. Make sure the blender container is locked into place and the lid is on tightly. Then, with the power on, we can pull the cranberries a few times. This will let your, your cranberries get all blended up so that when they go back on the heat, they can boil down and you can have a nice smooth cranberry sauce. I think that's good enough. Let's put it back on the heat. Carefully remove your blade because you don't want to pour that back into your saucepan. Now, you'll take the mixture that you've just blended up, pour it back into your saucepan. And again, you may need to scrape out a little bit that got stuck. And if you need later, you can wash your blender easily by putting some water in it and a little bit of dish soap and then blending it all together again. Now that your cranberries have been blended and are back in your saucepan, you want to put them back on the heat. And leave them on the heat for an additional minute or two so that it can boil down a little bit more and you can have a thicker cranberry sauce. If you would like, you can put the cover back on for this minute or so. Now that your cranberry sauce has been on the heat just a little bit longer, you can see how it's doing. It should be nice and thick. If you would like, you can leave it a little bit, leave it on a little bit longer and it will get even thicker. Or you can take it off when it's still a little bit runny if you want your cranberry sauce to not be as solid. I'm gonna take the sauce off the heat now so that it can start to cool. Sorry. Are you still there? I hope you enjoyed making your own cranberry sauce and any, any time you might have spent together making it. If it didn't come out exactly the way you want, that's okay. That's no reason to stop experimenting with it, keeping a, keep making it again, or to stop doing anything for that matter. You can keep going until you make it your own and make it how you like it. That's one of the joys of cooking. Now, there are plenty of fun variations on making cranberry sauce that you can experiment with next time you make it. Fortunately, simple cooking recipes like cranberry sauce don't need very exact ingredients, unlike something that you might bake, like cookies or a cake. When cranberries are in season and easier to find during the fall time, you may consider using fresh cranberries from a farmer's market or somewhere else local or in a grocery store. Um, if you use fresh cranberries, you'll probably just want to boil them for longer beforehand um, so that they have longer to soften. 
and you'll probably use more sugar because fresh cranberries don't come pre-sweetened like dried cranberries that you get out of a bag. You also might consider cutting and squeezing fresh lemons. In that case, you would use a juicer like this juicer here to get your lemon juice out. Or you can use pre-squeezed lemon juice that you might buy in a bottle at the store. You might even want to try using different types of sugar or other sweeteners. The closer a food is, in general, to its natural form or how you would find it in the environment, off the tree or cranberries off a bush, the healthier it generally is for you. You also might want to try adding other ingredients and flavors to make your sauce your own. My mom, when making her cranberry sauce, likes to add orange zest, walnuts, um, she even adds cinnamon to it. You can really do with it what you want. Um, the possibilities are quite endless, so feel free to keep experimenting and have fun with making your own food. Have a great rest of your day. I hope you enjoyed.